On today's Lockdown NBA, are the Miami Heat cooked? What have the Celtics figured out? And in Count It Up, should the Nets give Kyrie a new contract? All that and more on today's Lockdown NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, you're locked on in the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, where the best way to help us grow is comment below. Let us know what you think. Are the Miami Heat cooked? Let us know in the comment section below what you think about that. You can also en- answer any of our counted up questions. And joining me, as always, on a Thursday, host of Locked On Bulls, what you got for me, Pat, the designer? I just want a competitive Eastern Conference Finals, though. <laughs> I just want a competitive game. Just one. You know, you know who might want it more than you? Miami Mike, fans. Mike Breen. Mike Breen, was, <laughs> Mike Breen was dying on Wednesday night. Mike Breen was just sitting there going, way off. Like, <laughs> more than I've ever heard him before. Oh, uh, so we'll man. break down that game. And, of course, we'll play our favorite game every single week. We will play where we will count up the most interesting, fun things in the NBA over the last couple of days. Let's get into it. The Miami Heat. Just ran out of gas. Just ran out of everything. Ran out of shots. Ran out of jumpers. Ran out of everything. They lose 80 to 93 against the Boston Celtics. We'll talk about the Celtics in a minute. But let's start with this Miami Heat team. No Tyler Hero. They there's the big one of the big stats coming into this game was well, Miami's only won three quarters. It's two and two, and they've only won three quarters. Boston has won nine quarters and they've tied for four quarters. And so, like, I even saw Dan Lebitard, like, after the first quarter. Miami didn't do anything well, but they did the most important thing. They won a quarter. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I guess if that's the most important thing, you did accomplish that. But this, like, this team just seems so done. Tyler Hero's been out, and they're done because of their injuries. Kyle Lowry, hamstring. He's missed eight games in the playoffs and played eight games in the playoffs. He doesn't look like anything like Kyle Lowry we've seen the last couple of years. And Jimmy Butler has got to be hurt. Like, has to be. He had that 41-point game in Game 1. He had 29 points in Game 2. In Game 3, he had that knee injury where he was out for the second half. And since that knee injury, or since the, since Game 2, basically, 9.5 points a game, he's shooting 22% from the field and 14% from 3. Pat, do the, do the Miami Heat have any other answers here? You know what? I, I'm not going to say that they don't, right, because – it's not like Miami's the only team that's banged up. Yeah, Miami's the only team that wasn't 100%. Tyler Hero not being there makes a big difference. Um, but it, it's like we were talking earlier today. If Miami gets down big, they, even if they're healthy, even if both teams are 100% healthy, Miami doesn't have the firepower to come back from this. But the difference is Jimmy Butler, right? Like in this, game, in, in this game, the there was never a moment where you felt like Jimmy's being aggressive. Jimmy's attacking. There, there was one moment, literally, in at the end of the half, he sh- went hard to the bucket, got a layup, got the finish, got didn't get the end one on it. But like that was the one moment where it was like, okay, maybe Jimmy's gonna get himself going as we head into the third quarter here. Jimmy Butler took 18 shots tonight, four for 18, took five three pointers, one for five. He only had 13 points and six rebounds, and it was a lot of like. Uh, more more towards the mid-range than than what we've seen when Jimmy kind of gets into those tough moments where he's like, all right, I'm just going to go downhill. And I think the difference is, right, with this Boston Celtics team, when the refs let them play like they did tonight, yeah, that makes such a di- – like, didn't it? Didn't this game remind you of how they played Brooklyn early in, in the playoffs? Like, just we get to be physical, we get to beat the heck out of you. Oh, we're, we're, we're good. We get to be physical and you're missing some answers, right? Like yeah. the Nets seemed like they were missing a couple answers, especially, okay, we can take out a couple of your players. We can take out, you know, Jimmy Butler from this game, especially if he's hurt, right? And yeah. especially if Kyle Lowry's hurt, we can take both of those options out. Go ahead. Gabe Vincent, go ahead and we'll, we'll give you the one-on-one matchup. Go yeah. ahead, Duncan Robinson. If, if you guys are going to play him, we'll let him take 10 threes and we'll let him, you know, try to beat us. But we're not going to let – I mean, and, and, and then Bam Adebayo has just been so frustrating to watch. As, as, I'm, I'm sure as a Miami fan, it would be as well. Because in the second half, he started to see him get more aggressive and started to see him get into it. But, I mean, we were 
four, four or five minutes into the game. And I think I tweeted, it's so weird that I'm watching this game right now. And I forgot Bam Adebayo was even on the heat because he just wasn't like, wasn't involved in the offense. Didn't seem like he was involved at all. And then he had that, uh, he had that put back dunk. He had a, a shot before that. And it seemed like he was getting into it, but he just never really took command of this game or this series. Really? This should be a series that he should be able to, uh, to get some stuff going. And he just hasn't really at all. Um, but the, the, for for Miami, like it's their offense, right? Their offense just doesn't have it, and especially with Tyler Hero. Like it seems like their team, their offense, they have to have all their parts. They yeah. have to have each part because each part answers a question. And Boston tries to take away a lot of those answers. They're like, okay, we're we have smart. We have these two wings. We have these two bigs, and and we can have a bunch of different iterations of this defense that can answer a ton of that can stop a ton of answers for your team. And Miami would say, okay, we're at full strength. We have Butler who can hit in the mid-range. He can be aggressive. He can be physical. We have Tyler Hero that can just hit all over the court and can be that finesse shooter type guy. We have Kyle yeah. Lowry that can distribute. We have Bam that can finish and that can do this. And when they don't have those things, then all of a sudden it's easier for Boston to take away some of those other things that Miami has. And it just seems like they're just running out of it. And one more point here. It, it looked like P.J. Tucker and Gabe Vincent were the only guys really – giving a crap in this game too it was just it was tough for Miami in this whole game just just as a watch to me Miami turned into the Bulls versus the Bucks um when I watched this game Jimmy Butler is an excellent back to the basket turnaround pull up Jade in your face player he's an excellent drive to the basket player but when I don't have to worry about the floor being spaced out I can focus in on Jimmy driving yeah. to the basket and attacking the rim there's no Tyler Hero. Who's going to step up from the three? Duncan Robinson's disappeared after he got his money. <laughs> um, th there's literally nobody the, left. He, here's their backcourt here, back went, what, zero for six, zero for nine. He, he, Lowry and Struess. He, here's your, here's your, uh, your three-point shooter for tonight. Lowry, 0 for 5. Struess, 0 for 7. Tucker, 1 for 5. Robinson, 3 for 10. Vincent, 1 for 7. Olin Depot, 0 for 3. Uh, Caleb Martin, 1 for 3. Like, you're not going to win a lot of games that way anyway. And and the, the thing is, right, this is the game we expected. 90-83 to 83 was the game coming into this series. We thought we were going to get the entire series. Like, okay, these are two of the best defenses in the NBA. But the problem is that it, it's like what I said earlier was if Boston's down 17, I won't turn the game off. Because yeah. Jason Tatum can get hot. Jalen Brown can get hot. Pritchard can get hot. Uh, um. Al Horford Grant, Grant can get Williams hot. got hot now. Grant one Williams <laughs> can get hot. If Miami's down 17, I'm pretty pretty sure that the game is over. So I'm not going to say Miami's 100% dead because if they get out and Jimmy can have a game, this is a completely different team, right? Like you could see this get to a game 7. But it, it it's it's going to be tough for him if Jimmy Butler is injured to the point where he just can't get get it going. I just think injury wise, I, I think if the, if that's the issue, if it's not just like the Celtics defense does deserve some credit, but if it is just you know injuries with Hero being out, Kyle Lowry being limited, Butler being limited, if it is Struess has a hamstring thing he's been working through, like if, if it's just that for for this team, then I, I think they're done, right? Like I, I think it, it's it's one more game. Maybe they get one more game. Uh, I just saw um, Harwood Paraxium are. Uh, um, Matt Moore on Twitter retweet somebody that said, uh, this is the first game that Miami actually had better shot quality per second spectrum than the Celtics. The first, the first game yeah. that it's happened is, and they still got like destroyed in this game, especially in that second half when Boston really stepped up. So it just seems like they're running out of answers, especially in the injury front, but coming up, let's talk about the Boston Celtics. They had an incredible third quarter. They really stepped up to play for all the negative that we can say about the Miami heat. We can say a bunch of positives about the Celtics. Did they figure out a formula? We'll talk about that coming up, but before we do, let me tell you about rock auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models of cars, it's impossible for you to stock all the parts that you need for your car or truck at a chain store. Like, to walk up to some place where they got some little dinky, like, warehouse in the back, and they say, okay, we have parts for this, we have parts for this. They can't have the parts for everything, but rockauto.com has them. They will deliver them right to your house. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. The prices are reliably low for every single customer. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? They know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. It's rockauto.com. 
Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Make sure to check out the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast. Host Rafael Barlow, who Chad Ford gave the Big Board newsletter to. He said, I have anointed you as the next draft guy. That's Rafael Barlow. Also joined by Richard Stamen, a.k.a. Mavs Draft. They give fans an in-depth look at the NBA draft, mock drafts, and, of course, big boards. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. All right, Pat, let's talk about the Boston Celtics because it didn't look good for the Celtics early either. Like This was just an ugly game overall on both sides. Uh, the Celtics scored 17 points in the first quarter, 20 yeah. points in the second quarter. Uh, Jalen Brown looked awful, just absolutely awful. I saw a couple Celtics media people, I think it was Keith Smith, tweet out, like, you just can't play Jalen Brown right now. <laughs> it's like yeah. it got to be that bad where your second best player – or what should be your second best player is just playing that bad, and even into the third, the beginning of the third quarter, it was just really bad for him. At, at this, you know, at, at halftime, he was two for seven with four turnovers. All four of those came in the first quarter. It was just a rough day for Jalen Brown. And then that third quarter, they they kind of like figured it out. They they went on an eight zero run to start the third, and then Tatum and Brown finally started hitting the shots that they were getting in the first half. They finally started hitting them. Jalen Brown stopped like being too cute with his dribble and trying to like do some extra stuff. He's like, I'm just gonna go and be aggressive and be decisive in my decisions. And they took over in the second half. Um, Tatum had 18. Jalen Brown had 19. And like, did that out? That almost outscored the entire Miami Heat team in that, in that second half. Four, four for twenty in that third quarter. Four for twenty-three. They went in that third yeah. quarter. The Heat had the Heat had thirty-eight points in the second half, and yeah. Tatum and Brown had what uh, thirty-seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. That's bad. <laughs> it, it's this is a weird scenario where like you're watching them. Do, do you feel good about it? Right. That's the question that I would ask the Celtics fans. Do you feel good about what you saw tonight? Because it's not an anomaly. We've seen this over the series. Like we've seen one guy have a good game. The other guy kind of have a good game, but we've seen multiple games where Jason Tatum wasn't shooting the greatest, got his points, but wasn't shooting the greatest. Jalen Brown wasn't shooting the greatest. And it says something about your team when guys can step up. But I mean, tonight, Tatum shot at 25% from the three-point line, 35% from the field as a whole. Like you said, couldn't get it going early. Ends up with 22 points, 12 rebounds, nine assists. He was passing the ball well in this game, very well in, the, in that first half. Mm -hmm. But guys just couldn't knock down shots. And then Jalen Brown, like, if you, you're kind of trying to think, like, can they get through this series? If I think that they're good enough to get through this series, but as you extrapolate it out, I have concerns about the two of them together because between them, they're, they're nine turnovers tonight. Like, that, that's a tough game yeah, they to go out there and win. They've struggled to handle the ball. Like you said, Jalen Brown, like it's like he's, he's trying to make that back-to-the-basket spin, step-back move, and, yeah. and it falls out of his hand every time. At least in the first half. In the second half, it's like, wow, that's a gorgeous move. <laughs> Great to see him do it. I mean, I mean, how do you feel about this team – just like, do you feel like Tatum and Brown is enough, even if Jimmy's on tonight, right? Like, this is a close enough game that if Jimmy Butler has a regular Jimmy Butler game, we could be talking about this going the other way. Well, I, I mean, I guess. It was not close in the second half. That third quarter, I mean, they just they blew him out. And then the second half, I mean, he got up to a 20-point lead at, at one point. Uh, like, this final score is 13 points, but it doesn't show how – how big that like they yeah. were up 20 and the heat had only scored 16 points in the third quarter. Like you just don't come back from a deficit like that. I think to your point though, Boston can do just enough on offense. Like just, they can do just enough. And sometimes that's all you need, especially yeah. if your defense is that good. You have that many answers on defense. Marcus smart, two wings, two bigs, Grant Williams off the bench too. Um, yeah. And like that, that gives you just an, enough to try and figure out seeing this Warriors team up close for the last week or so, if they, okay. if they, I know it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. It's okay. It's I okay. still believe. Wait, where's I'm my, good. where's my drop from lockdown Mavs? Do Mavs it. And seven. Mavs and seven. <laughs> but <laughs> if they do, if they do face the Warriors, it's going to be fascinating to see how many of those answers that they, they have on defense can still hold up against a team like that, that can, that moves the ball a ton. That's going to be moving constantly that relies on speed and that relies on, you know, their ability to just get shots up off at every point on the floor, like literally from half court to, to the rim, they can get yeah. off shots. And so that's going to be fascinating. But in this series, I think especially with Hero out, with Butler and Lowry limited, like 
they have enough defensively. They just have, it just has to come together for them on offense. They had a terrible time shooting the ball. They're oh. 10 of 33 from three in this game. Um, yeah, but like but you said, the, the turnovers and you know, this is this is the series that I think everybody came in. Th- now, you didn't expect 32 to 16 <laughs> in the third quarter. But this is the series that most of us expected, right? Like, the, the quarters ended 17 to 19, 20 to 23. Big third quarter for Boston, 32 to 16. Ooh, 32 points. <laughs> but, but, but the fourth quarter, 24 to 22. Like, this is the series we all expected it to yeah. be. I, and and I think that's why, like, Boston did not play a great game no. either. It's like you said, they did enough to win. I, I'll, I'll played, one, this, played one good quarter, like one really good quarter. And, one. And that's all it took. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll ask, I'll, I'll go as far to say this, right? Like, is this the result of possibly not having a quote unquote superstar on either team? You don't think Jalen, you don't, don't think Jason Tatum's a superstar? I think Jason Tatum is having an excellent playoff run and is having an excellent and had an excellent end to the season. I can't take away anything that he's done, but we're we're seeing a lot of these games like this. Like even when he scores well, right? Like the turnovers are there. Yeah. Or even when he plays it, and maybe it's just maybe it's not maybe it's Jalen Brown isn't good enough to do it. Maybe, but there there's a lot of these games where we get in these situations where. It's it's like coming down to the last moment in a game where you're like you should be cooking right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I think I think we've seen enough from from Tatum that we can that we can expect that he's had some rough games, but I, I think we're at the point where he's he's, he's also he's, dealing with injury as well. So true. Yeah, yeah. He had in the first he quarter had the, he had yeah. that he had that right arm thing that he was dealing yeah. with. Uh, it didn't even get looked at. Didn't even get brought out. So maybe it's not even a big deal, but. Um, but yeah, that, so I, I, I think that this Boston team can get it done. I think, I, I think I've seen enough just when, even when nothing is going right for them, like it was in the first half, then all of a sudden they can have that kind of a third quarter and turn it on like that. And their defense can be what it is. And then you get the contribution from like Derek white off the bench, Derek white in the first half was like the only good thing going for the, for the Celtics yeah. coming off the bench. What did he have? Like 11, he had 11 points, three assists in the first half. They need a little spark like that every once in a while. They get it maybe from Grant Williams one night. They get it from Derek White one night. Maybe Pritchard one night. You know, they just they have they have just enough and just like one role player that steps up in a good way. And uh, and maybe that's all it takes. But we've said the same thing going the other way. Like About Miami. Like, let, let, let's not let's not. I mean, like Tyler Hero hasn't played great this playoff series, and we've seen two games. Say, this, we haven't seen him very much. We, we've seen two games in this in this uh, uh, five game matchup where the Miami Heat have absolutely been dominant. You know, it could, so it, I, it could go the other way. It it's could just, it, like we we could be what what my point is like we could be having this conversation tonight. And granted, Game Five winners usually win the series. That, 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 what is it like a seventy five percent clip? Something like it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, but. We could literally be having this conversation right now. Like Miami has no shot to come back. They, they, and game in Sunday, we could be like, wow, like Boston really didn't show up for this one. That's pretty much been the theme of this series. Yeah. Yeah. And well, what was the, what was the stat that Mike brain was freaking out about? It was uh, in the first quarter (laughs) at three minutes, Miami took the lead away from Boston. It was the first, this is, this is game five, this game tonight. It was the first lead change since game two, the first quarter. So, yeah. There, there have been what, uh, six, seven, eight, nine <laughs> quarters since then. There hasn't been a lead change. It's like whoever comes out and scores first yeah. is the one that wins the game. And so maybe that that's the same case in Game Six. Miami comes out, and then all of a sudden it's you know a seven game series, and then anything can happen. But uh, I just think those Miami injuries are really holding them back um, at, at this point. But coming up, let's get into our favorite game every single week. We're going to count up the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. Joel Embiid had something fun to say on Twitter. Kyrie Irving, should we give him a contract? And Magic Johnson is doing something that I think everyone expected but isn't even noticing right now. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Truebill as Pat tries to figure out what exactly that's my a, team's... That's a concerning statement. Whatever, <laughs> <that out. laughs> Whatever Pat decided trying to figure out my tease. 
Uh, Truebill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't want, need, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple for you. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions with just one tap. There's so much stuff that you can subscribe to. My wife got this new subscription where it's a box that they send you like a book of the month and then like some other items from other books that they've had that they've done before in that club and i'm like how many more subscriptions could there possibly be we're like a, like a book subscription club she says she has a subscription to a company that sends like uh air fresheners for your car every single month she has a subscription for all these things so we may need true bill pretty soon here just to see everything that we, we have on it's the dock bad one no there's uh, air, air, air fresheners for the car every month it's, it's nice now some of them are good but the ones that you don't want don't fall for the scams anymore. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. You can save you thousands a year. Again, truebill.com slash locked on NBA. All right, Pat. We've been talking about Boston, Miami. Boston takes a 3 2 lead in that series. And now we are ready to play our favorite game every single week. Count it up. Count it up. Count it up. Count it where we count up the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. I'll start with this one. Mike Breen is legendary broadcaster for the NBA, has done the finals each of the last, like, 85 years. Um, Mike Breen has two different calls, right? Let's say your team, so let's say the Chicago Bulls are playing, I'll say my, my, my Dallas Mavericks are playing, you listening, whatever your favorite team is. Which one hurts more? Count it up. When he gives a great way off or... When he has the call for the other team when they get a lead and he goes, it's the largest lead of the night when the other team's starting to go on a roll. Count it up. What's What hurts more? Um, That's not the catchphrase. I thought you were going to go with him. I know. Uh, I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I, I zigged and zagged. You, you, you zagged on me on that one. Um, I would get... I, the because, way off one hurts because if, if like your favorite player throws up like a bad one where he hits Jerry West in the face, you're like, oh, that one just nah, that's a knife you, to the heart. You know what though? Like, way off doesn't hurt for me as much as largest lead of the night because way off like people miss one shot. They, they yeah. could be you. You you could come back from one shot. Largest lead of the night means like. I'm probably down 15 on national <laughs> TV right now. Well, it was like that third quarter where he's like, largest lead of the night. I'm like, oh, God, that the, the heat may be done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're and, a heat fan, it, you hate that. That's how call we always At that felt. point in the game. Yeah. Joel, uh, Joel Embiid, during the middle of the game when Miami was getting dominated, tweeted out a simple, quote, Miami needs another star. Count it up. On a scale of one to five, how savage of a troll is this for Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat and everything that they try to say at Joel Embiid? You know what? I'd say a one. You don't, I don't think so. I don't think this is a troll at all. I you, think this is Joel Embiid dropping up my like, boy. Uh, what's going on down there? I heard you need the, some help. Uh, the nightlife is lit. You need some help. You need some help. I think that was a. I don't think that was a message to Jimmy Butler at all. I think that tweet goes straight to the office of Pat Riley to try and get uh, <laughs> Joel Embiid down there, dog. Because I mean, listen, we heard the man crush that they got on each other after the uh, that 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 final game, Miami yeah, Philly, did. dog. So. I don't think that's a troll at all. I think that was a, <laughs> they got me up here with Harden, bro. Get help. So and, uh, and he gave a great, okay, y'all are stupid LMAO with a bunch of like yeah. crying emojis after, Cle after clearly that. talking about what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. Just like, no, y'all, y'all are so stupid. Um, also though, Joel Embiid, second team, all NBA did not get first team all NBA, but he got a hundred, he got 414 points. That's like, you know, ranked voting with like first, second, third team. Jason Tatum made first team. He had 390 points. Count it up. How much do we need to change the all NBA voting so that it's positionless? Because even Jason Tatum came out and said it needs to be positionless. There's no way Joel Embiid shouldn't have made first team. There's no award in the NBA anymore that makes sense. <laughs> Just none of them. How they choose the award, how the awards get picked. How, like, here's the thing. DeMar DeRozan's all NBA second team. But DeMar DeRozan made the all-star game as a, as a shooting guard. He's on all NBA second team as a forward. 
the positions just don't make sense anymore. Nothing, it's nothing just... in the NBA makes sense. How they choose the teams don't make sense. Joel Embiid is lit. He's he's an he's an MVP candidate, and he's not first team All NBA. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but I mean, and the tough part is because like this, this is contract implications for a lot of people, right? For sure. Like, there's some people to get paid based on how well they do in a season and. Jalen Rose halfway paying attention just to dictate <laughs> his contract. That's why. Let's go to that one now. Kyrie Irving got one third team All NBA vote, and we know who the voter was. Jalen Rose admitted on ESPN. He said he put them there because, quote, I get mesmerized by his talent. And then eventually he admitted it was a mistake because he got mesmerized by his talent. So I'm 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 so ready for this one. I'm interested to see what you're gonna say. Count it up. How many guards should have gotten or could have gotten a vote instead of Kyrie Irving? So, like, we already know that, uh, who was it, Chris Paul and Trey Young made third team. So, we're not going to include them because they already made it. But how many of these guys would you pick instead of Kyrie? Let's say you had a vote and they're, like, they're putting them in front of you. Okay, okay which one of these would you pick? Fred Van Vliet. Yes, he'd get a vote. James Harden. No. And let me, re let me remind everybody, Kyrie scored 27 points a game on six assists a game. But he only played 29 games. Yeah. And Brooklyn was 14 and 15 in those games. Yeah. That to me matters a lot. So, yes on Fred Van Vliet. No on James Harden. No, James Harden is a third option on a good team at this point. No on James Harden. Donovan Mitchell. <sighs> I'm no. going, yeah. I'm going, yes. Give me John. Give me Don over Kyrie. Like, if I had just a vote just straight up between the I, two of them, I would absolutely. I, yeah, because see, it's tough because he, yeah, go Donovan Mitchell, yeah, yeah. Darius Garland, yes, heck yeah, that one's for Dejounte Murray, yes, that's your guy, uh, your guy Zach Levine, yes, you. <laughs> Kyrie played twenty nine games. Let's just remember that, that. That's that's really the, like the, we we can go through most of them. It doesn't matter because he played twenty nine games. <laughs> the DPOY, Marcus Smart. <sighs> Yeah, because he's DPOY. Right? Like, that's an end of the court. Clay Thompson. He didn't play that many, more, that many more games. I would say no on Clay because the best we're getting of Clay is happening right now, and it's an award during the season. Yeah, Clay played Clay played just 32 games, so yeah. I'd probably put Kyrie over him, even though the Warriors are definitely better in his, in his games. Yeah. Um, Anthony Edwards. If we're moving yes. positions. If we're moving positions around, yes. Kyle Not Lowry. Even. Kyle Lowry. Miami Heat didn't get any players on no. All NBA. No, we're doing it. CJ McCollum and what he did with the Pelicans. CJ McCollum. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He was he was still good with the. They were terrible, but he was still good with Portland. But <laughs> uh, Bradley Beal. That one's tough. That was Bradley Beal because he went out at what point? 40, 40 games. He averaged twenty three points. And but remember. Wizards were really good to start the year for like three weeks. <laughs> no on Brad Beal over Kyrie. Yeah, Brad Beal had a really bad year this year for him. Um, Drew He's Holiday. Get 200. Jeez. Drew Holiday actually got a vote uh, from somebody. I, I put Drew Holiday yeah, in. Yeah, Drew Holiday. Yeah, no, yeah. Drew Guess Holiday. who also got a vote for, for as a guard? Who? Mikhail Bridges. Don't even get it in. Yeah, that one doesn't even got, make sense. I've got it makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense to me either. DeMar DeRozan's a forward. Let's continue on the Kyrie Irving train. The New York Daily News said, quote, the Nets championship hopes, hopes hinges on an amicable solution with Kyrie Irving, whose personal decision not to get vaccinated and unpredictable injury history have left the Nets, Nets hesitant. And now, according to a source familiar with the Nets thought process, outright unwilling to give him a long-term extension. So count it up. How many years would you give Kyrie Irving? One to five. Five, you're giving him the max. One, you're giving him a one-year prove-it deal. If you're the Nets, how many years would you be willing to give Kyrie? I am this on so Stephen A. Smith's side with this. Mm. I would give Kyrie Irving an undisclosed amount of money. <laughs> Knowing the talent that he is. Like, Kyrie, here's a blank check. But the end date is the end of next season. One year. One year with a team option. So I'll give you a two-year deal, but you have to sign off on a team option. Not because because Kyrie Irving is 
an amazing basketball player. Kyrie Irving is arguably one of the best offensive basketball players we've ever seen. He's got the best handle that I've ever seen in the NBA. I understand people are going to be like, this guy never watched AI. Watched every game of him. He's got the best. He's taken everything that everybody with great handles has done and perfected it. But I can't count on him being there, not on COVID, not on uh, 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 just taking a high injuries and going overseas. Injuries. Kyrie Irving's entire career has been marred by injuries. 103 games out of the last three years. And now this past year is a lot mostly due to COVID. But I, I, I can't. I, I mean, in his time in Brooklyn, he's played. You said 103 games. 103 like, games over the last three years for Brooklyn. I can't. And and it's because of that. Like the thing is, right? Injuries don't go away. Like, yeah, you 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 can fix them and you can put them back together and things can work. But as you get older, they're going to continue to pop up. And these injuries have been with Kyrie pretty much since he was younger. All right. The last one, the last counted up here for you. This one really caught me off guard today, but I was re- I was reading around the NBA today. When ESPN announced its new NBA countdown crew in October, remember this? It was supposed to be Stephen A. Smith, Michael Wilbon, Jalen Rose, and our boy Magic Johnson. <laughs> and the quote was, Magic Johnson will frequently appear as an analyst and will join the team for marquee events throughout the regular season, NBA playoffs, and finals. However, how often have you seen Magic Johnson on ESPN this year? I don't think I've seen Magic Johnson at all on ESPN this year. Maybe, Magic, maybe once, maybe once. Magic Johnson has appeared on one show okay, on hey. ESPN in early <laughs> March. That's it. From what we are told, he is not expected to be on during the finals. But he could be. Um, he hasn't been on any of the marquee events. So yeah. <laughs> how many more Magic Johnson ESPN appearances do we get in NBA games before the end of the season? At max. There are 12 more games left if each of these series goes seven and the finals go seven. Um, in the <laughs> immortal words of the man, the myth, the greatest point guard in NBA history, Magic Johnson. <laughs> I'm not going to be there. <laughs> uh, you're not going to see Magic for none of these games, bro. Um, isn't that the weirdest thing? He was supposed you say, to. Would you, I gotta pick a number? I, one. I'll pick one. You said one, one to five. So I'll, I'll pick one because I. I can't just said count it up. How, how many games? You can oh, pick. okay, zero. Yeah, zero. Like zero. No. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. He was supposed to. He was like a big headliner for them. That it was like it's supposed to be Stephen A. and Wilbon and Magic, and they got this relationship between Wilbon and Magic and Stephen A. and blah blah blah. And then we just haven't seen Magic Johnson at all, and I think it's hilarious. Yeah, no, nah, he's he's not going, bro. It's, 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 Magic is making so much money. Like, he probably doesn't even know that he's supposed to be on ESPN. He's like, oh, dang, I did sign that contract, hey, bro, didn't you know I? what I'm saying, uh-huh. bro? Like, if you and I signed that contract, it'd be life-changing, right? Like, just complete. And he's like, oh, dang, I was supposed to be there for that day. Bro, there ha- <laughs> there has to be like the he's got to have the best contract implications in that mug. Like, hey, come if you want. Like, like they <laughs> like they literally have two desks there. Like, if we got five people or we got six. What's the what's the what's the Kelly um from the Office quote where she was like, you know, if I was CEO, I or if I if I won the lottery, I would just you know like I would still work here, but my salary would be one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and then like nobody could tell me what to do i would stay i would show up late i would do all this and like what are they going to tell me my salary is one i only make one dollar <laughs> like that's what magic johnson's done with this espn basically <laughs> there you go that's locked on nba go listen to pat the designer on locked on bulls listen to me on locked on mavs also go check out the locked on nba big board podcast guys thanks so much for listening to locked on nba boom